right here on this corner where uh, I tried to get a cab because I had broken my leg and fractured my other ankle September 5th. And along this wall, everybody was pointing up to the sky. The Twin Towers were visible from this corner. Right now, all you see is the sky. And one of the towers had already been hit by a the first airplane. That morning, I was trying to catch a cab because I was in extreme pain from the uh, leg and ankle fracture. I was trying to catch a cab to go to a, uh, a hospital to get a uh, hard cast put on because I had, uh, like I said, I fractured my ankle on the 5th. And I did manage to catch a cab because when I saw the the fire in the first tower, I thought it was a small plane that had crashed into it. I didn't know it was an airliner at that time, and I didn't know it was a terrorist attack at that time. Until I got to the hospital on Union Square. So I managed to find a cab with my crutches in total pain and saying, uh, bless those poor people up there, but I gotta get a hard cast on this, on this ankle. So I get to the clinic, one of those uh, places where they just do bones and, and joints. And as I sat there uh, waiting for the, you know, the practitioners to come in to put a hard cast on my ankle, word started coming in that the Twin Towers were being attacked. And I had seen the first, the first thing. I had overheard from the people in the crowd that a plane had crashed in there. And because I was in such pain, I was definitely distracted. But people started rushing into the, uh, the waiting room and saying that we were being attacked, we were being attacked, and that they were attacking the Empire State Building. Then the report that the towers collapsed. And that was unfathomable, unimaginable. Unmanageable. So, so they... They just stopped. They weren't going to put a hard cast on me because they were going to do triage. So they put me in a wheelchair, rolled me out to the sidewalk, and just gave me some crutches, and off I went. I could barely walk. And what I saw at Union Square was uh, amazing. I won't go into detail now, but, but it was amazing. Well, waiting for my friends to arrive, I was... Uh, sitting in one of the little drugstores and people were coming in and telling stories. They had to tell somebody their stories about what they saw and it was again unimaginable. Uh, some woman said that she saw the towers collapse and, and she said all those firemen are dead and it's just so hard to imagine. And I saw people like zombies total shock walking. The, the, the entire front looked clean and normal, but as they passed the entire, so there was a, a, a dividing line down their, their side. It was covered in dust. It was, it was amazing. And I saw bus drivers picking up all these, well they had picked up all these people along the route going north and, and dropped them off at Union Square and they were all coming out all dusty and haggard and that bus driver turned around and went back to get more people. It was it was pretty amazing. Uh, you're gonna hear that word a lot. Amazing. And I had some friends who figured out a way to get me back home because there were no cabs. There were no cabs below 14th. They got uh, a bicycle and I was able to sit on the bicycle and use that as a uh, two-wheel wheelchair and I got home. And all I saw on the news, like everyone else, 24-7, were the towers collapsing, the towers collapsing, the towers collapsing. Any streets below 14th Street after 9-11 for about five or maybe ten days, two weeks, something like that, was cut off to uh, re regular traffic.
and for a city that there was there was no uh, there was no deliveries. All deliveries had to be brought in by hand cart from 14th Street below. Um, it was a mess, but people we did what we had to do to to survive, and uh, we did very well. One of the things that I do remember is the smell. The smell of all the chemicals and the, and the fumes, the smoke, and also the departed. Nobody wanted to say that, that we were smelling uh, the dead bodies, but it's, it has to have been there. There were up to 3,000 people. So, yeah, I'll never forget the odor. Never forget it. And it lingered, it lingered for, for weeks and weeks, and it was just everywhere. And uh, Brooklyn got it the worst. I think they had the plume of smoke travel over there the most. Right here is the Brooklyn Bridge. Remember the, once it happened, everything stopped. There were no subways, there were no buses coming from lower Manhattan going north. Everything just stopped. And Brooklyn Bridge wasn't filled with tourists. It was filled with people desperately trying to walk home. We're getting pretty close to the, uh, where the World Trade Centers uh, used to be. This is a, a church that was, I managed to stay up and uh, like a lot of the surrounding buildings. And they were uh, a place to go for, I guess, uh, all kinds of things, uh, first relief, uh, rescue efforts. People like to get their picture taken here. And this is about as close as you can get to looking into the hole unless you take the path train, which takes you right into the hole. Um, this is the first time I've ever come down here with my camera. Uh, I didn't feel there was a need to. Uh, I, because I lived here when it happened, it it's kind of gets etched into your, into your emotional brain. But here I am because I just wanted to let you know that the uh, 10th anniversary of 9-11, such as, as it's called, is coming up shortly and a lot of people uh, are still uh, healing from it and feeling from it and acting because of those emotions in their life and, and possibly uh, emotions like hate, anger, frustration distrust, uh, betrayal, uh, a bunch of stuff like that. Sadness because they lost family and friends in this tragedy. It's a strange place to get your picture taken, you know, for the family album. Especially when it hasn't been resolved and there's a lot of really hot feelings about it, you know. Emotional stuff. It's interesting, that part. Yeah, we just, we just passed that. They say a lot has already been said about 9-11 and the people who died there and the people who died in Washington, D.C. and in Pennsylvania and also the people who 
are now dying overseas. Uh, this, this was definitely a pivotal point in U.S. history. And I, I'm not sure exactly what to say as well. You know, I shot that video, the 9-11 video, remembering uh, that morning in August. And I, you know, I processed some stuff, just like a lot of people. And I didn't realize how much I still had in reserve as far as emotion. Uh, I would say on a scale of 0 to 10 in the EFT world, I'm down to about a 1. Uh, I think that has a lot to do with media always bringing up a new aspect. And the latest one for me was listening to the uh, voices of the flight attendant talking about uh, the uh, pilots had been stabbed and, and them speaking to the tower. So you, you can tell that, that it's not going to be easy to, to eliminate all your aspects because they're going to come up because the media needs to make a profit, they need to sell advertisements. So be it. I would say as you go through the next few days, next few years, next few months, that you allow yourself to feel, allow yourself to cry, allow yourself to be in a uncomfortable zone every now and then. And when that zone gets too tight and it wants to crush you, please start tapping, start tapping, even though it's just too much, I just want to move on, uh, it's so painful, it's so painful. Just keep allowing yourself to feel and then tap on it and you're going to feel a lot better. Uh, it's been really interesting making that video, like I said in the video, that was the first time I ever brought a camera down to the uh, site. I would say that in the next few days, in the next few months, you're going to be bombarded by a lot of media around 9-11. And the media is going to be projecting how you are going to be feeling. And they want to hit you hard because, like I said, they want to make a buck. So, a lot of people uh, will be listening to a lot of broadcasts, a lot of media, a lot of TV on Sunday, September 11th. And if you should be watching and you can't seem to shake it, even after you feel that you could shake it, you need to tap. Because tapping will help release all that stuck energy and just let it out so it doesn't get trapped in your body. Go ahead, watch it. It's like watching a car wreck, right? You can't take your eyes off of this. So remember to tap and be alert to how you feel. And if you sense you are uh, having uh, nightmares or you can't sleep or you're agitated, uh, 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 things are troubling you, things aren't going well where they used to go smoothly, tap on it. It could be a part of all this media attention around 9-11. So take care, uh, allow yourself to be uh, confused and, and out of focus because once you recognize that that's happening, then you can go back and tap. So this is Lillian Fimbers from The Genuine Life and take care.